manual signing of checks, or at least checks deemed to be sufficiently large enough to require an X review, is still a common occurrence in quite a few organizations. But does this make sense? Is it really a good idea? Or does it give management a false sense of security? Today we're going to talk about check signing and more specifically what protections having manual signatures put on checks actually gives an organization. Make sure you stick around until the end when we reveal the instances when getting a manual signature on checks is actually a bad idea. Okay. Let's start off with how this process is supposed to work. Typically in an organization, checks are run on a somewhat regular basis. It might be once a week, it might be twice a week, it might even be only twice a month, it might be every day, whatever it is, the checks are run. They when by a check run, we mean the checks are printed. When they come back from being printed, they usually go to the accounts payable department and there checks that are going to be mailed are pulled and put in the envelopes and mailed. And checks that require a second signature are pulled from the normal workflow and the backup is attached to them. And then they are taken out and given to an executive who is supposed to look at the backup, look at the check, make sure the check is written correctly, there are no problems, and then put a manual signature on it. That is what is supposed to happen. Then the checks go back to accounts payable, the backup is taken off and filed, and then the checks are mailed. As you can see, this is a very manual process. And in order for all this extra work to be worthwhile, it actually has to add some value. So what that means is when it adds some value is that the person who's doing the checking from time to time finds a mistake and would return the check and say, oh, this is written on the wrong account, or can you check and see if we paid this already, I think, whatever, or, you know, this the coding is wrong, something of that nature, okay? Now, that's what's supposed to happen. That's how best practice organizations approach this. Checks that require a manual signature typically are also large. And of course, what large is, is going to vary from company to company. Now, let's talk about not what's supposed to happen, but in reality, what does happen in many organizations. What happens is that the backup usually is attached and it's given to the person to sign the checks. Sometimes they'll be sitting in a meeting. Sometimes they'll be on a conference call. Rarely does that person sit and do nothing else but look at the check, look at the backup, make sure the dollar amounts are right, and do whatever other sorts of verification. But what does happen is the person will just take the checks and sign, sign, sign without looking at that backup. When they don't look at the backup, the immediate question that I ask is then, why are we doing this? They're not checking, they're not verifying, and it's a lot of manual work and waste a lot of time attaching it, unattaching it, and filing it. Now, the next thing that I want to talk about is not only what happens to that check within the organization, but what happens to that check when it hits the bank. Sometimes organization thinks that, for example, requiring two signatures, or in a few cases, I've actually seen three signatures being required, that the bank will check and make sure that those signatures are on it and not cash the check if they're not. That is 100% wrong. Banks do not check signatures. In some cases, banks will pull one out of every 10,000, that's right, 10,000 checks and do some sort of verification. But in reality, most banks don't check anything. So if you've ever heard Frank Abagnale talk, he has a whole bunch of funny stories about checks going through the banking system, you know, signed with an obscenity, for example, or, you know, ABC company or George Washington, you know, something like that. Okay. Bottom line here is you get no protection at the banks by requiring certain signatures on it. And sometimes people come back and say, well, okay, our process is, is that we require two signatures and it has to be one of these four people, whatever the story is. And Mary Jones, who is not an authorized signer, signed the check and it was fraudulent. Do we have any recourse to the bank? In the answer, let me make it real simple, no. So you're getting no additional protections at the bank. We want to focus then on what protections, if any, we're getting at the company before the check goes out the okay. door. Now, yeah. I promised we were going to talk about not only what the problem is, but a better way. So when we talk about check issuance, we really should have in place strong upfront controls, okay? Our authorized signers, our people who are putting manual signatures on checks should not be finding problem, okay? Do you have these strong controls in place? Well, I'm going to tell you a real easy way for you to figure out whether your upfront controls are strong. If your signers are actually checking the backup, doing some sort of verification, and I realize that's a big if, and they are not 
not finding anything and they are not returning any checks to be reissued or voided or recoded or whatever, then yeah, your controls are good. They are working. If they are returning stuff and you're either voiding checks or changing the coding or whatever, then you need to focus on that issue and try and strengthen those processes. But I realize this is a big if because you may not be getting stuff back to be reissued because the signers aren't actually looking at the stuff. So what you want to do is number one, in best case scenario, best way to approach this whole thing is to have strong upfront controls so that by the time that check or that payment gets onto the check issuance or the payment issuance file, there are no problems with it. That's our number one way. And if we are still putting manual signatures on, then absolutely, absolutely, you want to make sure that people are looking at that backup because otherwise it's just a lot of make work that nobody likes to do or look at. Now, I have one last issue that I want want to talk about. And sometimes I want to point out that getting these manual signatures on a check can actually be a bad thing. Why, you ask? Because it gives companies and it gives management a false sense of security. If your people aren't checking anything, then you know management thinks they are, but in reality they aren't. And so there's no controls there. When we talk to giving a false sense of security, I also want to share a little episode that I was involved in and miraculous managed to keep my mouth shut and not say what was going through my mind because I wanted to keep my job in case. Okay, so I worked at a, a one place where the only way you could get a rush wire done was if you had the signature of the chief operating officer, nothing else. If his signature was on it, the wire went. And his rationalization for why this was an appropriate control was that nobody would dare forge his signature. Now, it was all I could do to control myself and not come right out and say, yeah, okay, somebody who's going to try and steal a million dollars for us. Won't have any problem with that, but we'll have a problem forging your signature. I didn't say that, but that's actually what I was thinking. Because let's face it, somebody who's going to steal a million dollars will have no problem forging a signature. So in my opinion, we had really weak controls because of that. But anyway, I didn't say anything. So I ask you this, if you are putting, and when I say you, obviously, I mean your organization, has a process in place that is requiring manual signatures on checks, then you want to make sure that you're getting value from it. Because first of all, if they're not finding any errors, then maybe you don't need to be doing that. Or maybe you can raise the level. And or if they're not checking, then you want to work on that. But you want to make sure that you're getting value because if not, you want to change what you're doing so that you do get value and you don't just do a lot. But that doesn't mean controls should go out the window. Far from it. We recently identified a dozen different places controls sometimes go off the tracks during the accounts payable process. You can watch it right now using the link that has appeared on your YouTube screen and is in the description.